I am a very organized person. I have a color-coded calendar. I love a to-do list. I love the feeling of crossing things off my to-do list. Some days I wake up and I make a list of the lists I'm gonna make that day. And I used to think this was some kind of superpower, but as I've gotten older, I've learned that really like every other control freak you know, it's just my way of trying to deal with the anxiety that I feel about living in what is an inherently chaotic and dangerous and unpredictable world. But I didn't know that back in 1992 when Andrew and I first moved in together. I still thought it was a superpower and very quickly after we moved in, to this day I don't know whether I took or I was given the tasks that played to my strengths. I paid the bills, I kept track of where we were going. I planned a lot of weekends away, like most other young urban professionals in the early 90s living in Manhattan. We spent a lot of weekends doing what was called going to the country. We stayed in country inns, we ate country food and country restaurants, we bought country tchotchkes for our tiny little city apartment. But we had an advantage in this because Andrew's family, his parents owned a home in Stockbridge in the Berkshires. And so a lot of times we could go away for the weekend for the lodging and a lot of the food was free. And we would go for family occasions. We would sometimes go just us. We would go um, with friends if we were really lucky and they weren't going to be up there. And we lived in the city, but it was in Stockbridge that we fell in love. After we'd been living together about a year, one Sunday night, early in 1993, Andrew comes home from dinner with his father, and he asks for the name and contact information of our insurance agent, the guy who handles our renter's policy. And this is both totally out of character completely like out of the blue and really suspect. And I was like, why do you want this? You know, and he goes, my dad has a question he wants to ask him about the policy. And I go like, okay. And as I'm headed to my file of facts to get him this information, it dawns on me. Like a lot of the weekends that we go away, we are going to other people's weddings. And this guy is getting ready to propose. He wants this information because he's going to add an engagement ring to the insurance policy. He's going to put a rider on there. And I'm like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to just now kind of wait, right? And my suspicions are kind of confirmed on Monday when he comes home and goes, let's go away this weekend. I'm going to make the plans. I'm going to make all the arrangements. This is also, as the young people say, off-brand and highly sus. Like, this is not a thing he does. I'm like, okay, where are we going? You know, because what do I need to pack? He goes, just pack it all. So by the time Thursday comes, we're not going to wait till Friday, right? But by the time Thursday comes, like, I am packed. I've got a sweater. I've got, you know, a bathing suit in case there's a jacuzzi at the hotel. I'm ready. And... Um, and, oh, and on Thursday afternoon, just in case, I get my nails done. <laughs> and on Friday, I get home from work, and I'm waiting for Andrew, and there's totally no Andrew. He's running late, and he doesn't call because it's 1993. We don't have cell phones. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and finally he gets to the house, and this is first when he starts packing. And I'm ready to go, and finally, by the time we leave, there's traffic at the tunnel and you know it's gonna take a lot of time. And again, I'm like, where are we going? And he says, you'll see when we get there. And like, I, I'm asking, are we going to Boston? Are we going to Philadelphia? I have a notoriously terrible sense of direction. Like the fact that we're going north, this means nothing to me. Like, unless you tell me we're going from Soho to the Upper East Side, I know that's north. Otherwise, I got nothing. So we're on the road, and I'm like, where are we going? I heard my friend went to the Mohawk Mountain House. That's really nice. Shelly got engaged there. That's really nice, you know. 
are we going to the mall? No, I'm not telling you. He says, okay, so we're driving and I don't know where we're going, except I do know we are not going to the Berkshires because that much I know how to get there. And we are on the New York State Thruway and that is not the way. Somewhere around Albany, it's about eight o'clock at night and Andrew goes, all right, I gotta pull over and make a phone call. And we scrounge up some change off the floor of the car, because again, remember, no cells. And we get to a phone booth and he makes his call and he comes back to the car and he says, I called the restaurant that we're going to and we're late, but they'll stay open, they'll wait for us, but I've had to order the food already. I was like, okay, whatever. And soon enough, he says we're about an hour away and soon enough, I know where we are. This is the Berkshires. And I was like, what the hell, right? And he goes, no, I'm gonna, I was gonna trick you. So I took a different way and I did such a good job tricking you that I tricked myself <laughs> <laughs> and we got lost, but now here we are. And we're in Lenox and we go to the Church Street Cafe. It's our favorite restaurant. And by the time we get there, it's like nine o'clock, which is Berkshire midnight. <laughs> and we get inside and it's almost empty. But it's beautiful. Like after this kind of stressful ride up, it's really quiet in there and there's soft music playing and there are these pink fairy lights that give everything like a warm glow. And we sit down in what is essentially a private room and we just talk about a whole lot of nothing, right? You know, as we have salad and salmon and whatever. And the waiter clears the plates from the entree and Andrew goes, hey, he says, I want to ask you something. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because I have had this all scripted in my head for a week. Like I wasn't in charge of the logistics, but that did not stop me from planning this event in my head. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, so how do you think our relationship is going? And I'm like, what? That is not your line. <laughs> that is so, you are so going off book right now. Like, that is not it. And I get a little choked up. Like, good, I guess, fine, right? And he goes, what's the matter? And I go like, nothing. Because I'm not going to admit it. And as this is going on, the waiter comes and he puts dessert in front of me. It's a small plate and in these beautiful pink lights, I see what appears to be a small bonbon of some sort. It's kind of brown and octagonal. It looks like it's covered in dark chocolate. And I pick up my fork and I poke at my bonbon. <laughs> and I say, do you want to bite? Do you want to share this with me? And Andrew looks at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and I can't figure out what's going on. And I look back at the plate and I realize this is not a bonbon. That's not chocolate. It's black leather and it's a ring box. Aww. I know. And I, again, choke up, but for all the right reasons. And I open up the ring box and inside is the most beautiful ring I had ever seen. Like my plants did not include anything this beautiful. And this time, when he asks the question, it's the right one. And when I answer, I say, yes. And as we lean across the table and we kiss, I know in this moment that sometimes, even if I'm not in charge of the plans, things might just work out okay. Thank you.